Ladies and gentlemen, I got one question. What in the world is a vol? Here's the old one. This is going to be a tough play. The Cubs! What a series! James catches, puts up the three. Long go! Rebound box! Back out to Allen! His three pointer! What's going on, everybody? This is Parker with Take His Whistle and back with more Kentucky basketball. As it's been a minute, it's kind of been a minute. Uh, I have not um, made a video since last Saturday when we took on Arkansas. And I told you guys this because I wasn't expecting our next game our midweek matchup to be a very good game I, I figured we were going to kind of run away with it and we did uh, but uh, obviously the big one Kentucky Tennessee was yesterday and yeah so uh, I kind of just want to go over that some stuff in that game uh, first of all kind of touching on the Kentucky Vanderbilt game without without a a shadow of a doubt Vanderbilt came to play just buckets buckets uh we we only had we had a five point lead we, actually we were trailing most of the first half um, we took a five point lead in the halftime uh kind of had a, a pretty big second half run to uh kind of break things open uh that game your two heroes Robert Dillingham and Antonio Reeves on a senior night too and Antonio Reeves also hit a buzzer beater at the end of the first half in that game uh, kind of just some poetic justice and obviously Kareem Watkins was uh, a starter a starter which is cool and uh, it looks like his last game at Rupp Arena uh, but not much to talk about there like I said Vanderbilt played a great first half they were leading most of the game we went on a little run late take the lead back and kind of just carried the momentum in the second half where we we put out a win 93 to 70 seven but the big one that um i was most looking forward to uh not only for kind of a revenge game but also uh just uh much needed really honestly we we needed to win that game because who knows where we'd be at if we lost it could have been a lot worse if we lost and and i'm not and again i'm not saying that out of spite towards tennessee fans right like what would a tennessee fan said I, I could care less right we are the best program in basketball but we needed to win that game to set us up for succession here next week and it, it was just a, a humongous win and uh we went into knoxville where tennessee had only lost one time in conference play uh that was the south carolina who also beat us that was the only time that they have lost at home it was a rowdy place as it always is and we were able to get out the win 85 81 in a game where our defense kind of stepped up now uh second half was probably worse probably a lot worse than the first half uh we only held we only held tennessee to 29 points in the first half which is great that that offense is great which i'll get into tennessee here in a minute but 29 points in the first half is great and we just both teams just the wheels fell, fell off in the second half uh, both teams scored 52 points uh, luckily we just had the lead right uh, it was just a back and forth game uh, got very scary at the end uh, but we we did it we, we were able to win that game and you know it's kind of it's kind of funny it's kind of funny how how after the game Tennessee fans they got every excuse in the book right I figured they would because this is such a intense rivalry and and I feel like every time that one person one team wins the other team's fan base is just just yap in their mouths uh, but the the one thing that I have seen a decent amount uh, well a couple things first is is that Tennessee is claiming that Kentucky had to play their best game of the season to beat us if there is any Tennessee fans watching this just know that was far from our best game far from it and it's funny because UNC 
said the same thing. Auburn said the same thing. Alabama said the same thing. Arkansas said the same thing. That we continue, we just we randomly play the best game of our season against us, and all these teams continue to say that almost as if no, that's just our makeup. Is that we are gonna shoot a thousand threes a game, and we're probably gonna hit fifty percent of them. Like, like let's just be honest. Like our our team is every single person on that floor besides Ugo can can shoot the ball realistically and i mean i just and this was also a game this was a game where only five players right yeah only five players on our team score right and one of them was dj wagner who only put up four points right other than that you can say four people scored except we won by four so those four points by wagner actually potentially could have won us the game um but five people scored when we have one of the deepest benches in all of basketball right probably maybe the deepest in the country right where where we have 10 guys maybe even 11 guys that you can give them the ball and they're going to go score it, it's crazy and only five of them scored t- against tennessee that's far from our best game you want a game where we're all contributing look at look at the alabama game right look at the georgia game a couple uh, a couple a few weeks back this was far from our best performance and we still did it all right, in Knoxville at Tennessee. The next thing that I keep seeing them say is that they had nothing to play for. And, I mean, I get it. I guess so. I get it. Uh, I, I can see where you would say that you have nothing to play for because you guys already won the SEC title. Um, you already locked up the one seed. I get it. But at the same time, that's such a BS excuse. If you guys had nothing to play for, you guys would have set Connect. You would have set Ziggler. Like, you guys would have set players prior to this game if you really had nothing to play for no no i'm telling you every one of those players and rick barnes they wanted to go for the sweep they wanted to go for the sweep on kentucky i know the fan base did and you know it's just stop stop there is a chance there is a chance that we will get round three kentucky and tennessee potentially next week uh so i mean just stop stop tennessee I'm not going to say which one, um, but I'm not going to say either which. You guys might be a better team, maybe not. I'm not going to speak on who's better overall because we really don't know. You guys are ranked higher for sure. You guys had a better SEC record, yes. Like These are all, these are all facts, so maybe you guys are better. I'm not here to say either which, uh, but no. I mean, at the end of the day, Kentucky is a more historic program, and there's not you can't argue that you can't argue that so before we we get into the actual box score uh, i do kind of want to um, go over some of the negatives that we saw today or yesterday i'm sorry the first one i do want to get out of the way is the last minute of that ball game now I'm sure if you're watching this, you probably are a Kentucky fan. You probably watched that game. If you didn't, let me just sum it up for you. We had, a, I believe, an 11-point lead with about a minute and 10 seconds left. Tennessee had a chance to tie the game. If that makes not not the final score, but we just we we had a a, a or Tennessee had a chance to win it. Thank God that. Dalton Connect got a little tired, which again I'm gonna get into I'm gonna get into Tennessee here in a second. We had three turnovers and 30 seconds. You say, how is that even possible? Like like genuinely, how is that possible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh whether it was bad passes, it was sloppy passes, or just no basketball knowledge, no no common sense. And you, you weren't weren't expecting it, right? Like Tennessee has one of the best presses in college basketball. I'm going to go out on the limb and say that, that Tennessee doesn't have the best, but they have a really good one. They have an intense in-your-face press, a, a, a press where they trap you without fouling. They know how to trap without fouling you, and it's extremely hard. Kentucky has a press break. They do have a press break, but for whatever reason, we are not running it to capacity. So if, if I'm, going to get, I'm going to get a little technical here. Uh, if you, you sit there and watch their games, you, you'd figure it out exactly what they're doing and and maybe that is why they struggled so much yesterday was because i mean it's pretty obvious pretty easy press break and it's 
pretty easy press brake that you can press better. Um, basically, our normal inbounder is Reed Shepard. And they have another one, but our, I feel like our main one is Reed Shepard inbounds the ball. We usually have another ball handler, like DJ Wagner, and uh, on, on one side, and then you usually have Antonio Reeves on the other side. You have two, you have a big man all the way back, and then you have another big man kind of at mid-court, three-point line-ish. And those two players are fighting for to get open. They're, they're fighting to get open. If Shepard gives it to one of them, they give it right back to Shep. And, and then at that moment, I feel like Kentucky hopes that that breaks the press, even though they aren't even at the other free throw line all the way in the back. Like, I, I hope this is making sense because to me, it, it's just like I, I'm reading it like a book almost. Uh, but they, they expect the press to be broken whenever you still have half a court to go and you only have eight seconds. You only have like seven seconds to do it, honestly. The, the other one, the other type of press break we have is if, if, if Wagner or Dillian and Wagner or Reeves can't get open in that initial try to find, then someone like Mitchell will come up hopefully in front of his man and he would get the ball Shepard would take off the floor and right as they they kind of cross paths Mitchell or whoever it is will hand the ball off to Shepard and Shepard would just kind of cruise down there um, regardless that was not the that was not working yesterday that that was not working whether players couldn't get open whether it was just bad passes because he because Shepard or whoever was inbound in the ball was extremely rushed because it was taking so long for somebody to get open or two they would they they were just like they froze they almost froze I mean Reeves picked up a 10 second violation I'm, I'm, I'm guessing he obviously he didn't know the time but it, it, he really wasn't like panicking at per I would say like what you would expect in that moment he wasn't panicking and which is good it's good, but at the same time, I'm like, you got to go make a play. And, and it kind of seemed like he was just, like, waiting for it to develop instead of him making that play. Obviously, he didn't have his dribble. There was only so much he could do, but you still got to try to make a play. It it, it, it's, it was just frustrating because you knew Tennessee was going to do it. You knew Tennessee was going to pressure. They pressured all game long. They have a phenomenal defense. They have a great press. They're coached great by Rick Barnes. And you know... You just, you just knew what you were getting into, especially as Tennessee kept chipping away at this lead and Kentucky was struggling with the press. So I, it was just, that was just, the late game was bad. And I know people probably are going to blame that on Calipari. And I guess it can go both ways. It can go both ways. Cal, I mean, there, there's film to watch. I promise you this game was not the first time Tennessee has pressed all year. There's film to watch. You can see what they do. You have to be the coach to figure out a way to stop that. On the other side, if you're a player, you have to understand you have to do like audibles mid-game. You have you have to know, okay, this is not working, I'm gonna do this. Right? You have to be able to read that. And, you know, it just it didn't work out the way. Obviously, we got the win, so it's all just kinda uh, smoke and mirrors at this point but a very very scary moment and, and definitely something that's going to be need to work on going into next week and then inevitably the tournament the big tournament i guess another thing that we can we i can talk about real quick is is the foul trouble we we don't normally get in foul trouble and i think it's because we are such a deep team we got in some pretty serious foul trouble um yesterday like really bad actually dillingham only could have only played like literally three minutes in the first half because he picked up two early fouls. Wagner was in and out because he ended up fouling out of the game. Uh, Mitchell picked up two. He had to sit. Edwards picked up three, I think. Like, crazy foul trouble. I mean, it, like I said, everything, this is all smoke and mirrors because at the end of the day, we won. We ended up winning. Definitely something to, I guess, look at and keep in mind that like, you know, if we're reckless, we can get into foul trouble. But other than that, I think that's really all the negatives that I have in the game. I do want to kind of talk about some positives. Uh, and those two positives are one of two things. Actually, three things. I want to give three things. Two of them is Antonio Reeves and Reed Shepard. Antonio came to play. Big time game. 27 points, 7 rebounds. 
great game. And then obviously, Reed Shepard might just be the best freshman in the country. Also put up 27, 27 points, had five assists, six rebounds. Great, just absolutely greatness from both of those guys. Uh, like I said, only five players scored, and they were obviously our two leading scorers. Reed Shepard shot the ball phenomenally. Absolutely great efficiency for Reed Shepard as he put up 27 points. It wasn't like he was shot chucking, Dalton Connect. Uh, he was actually really just uh, putting up some some really good shots and, and quality shots, wide open shots, and he was hitting them. He was hitting them from from uh, the tip off to the end buzzer. He was hitting shots, and it was just it was it. Was, I love it. I love it. He got he caught fire, um, and he just couldn't miss. They had no answer for him. He was hitting some crazy crazy three point shots, uh, but yeah, definitely a fun time a fun time for for Shep and Reeves, and then obviously the last person which you guys can say what you want about it, but I'm going to also give my roses to Coach Calipari. He played a, coached a great game. He knew how Tennessee was going to come out. He knew what their offense was, and he knew that it was going to run through Connect. Now, I think everybody in the country knows that that offense is going to run through Connect, and everybody has tried to stop him, but yet nobody has really succeeded. Kentucky was really the best one to succeed whenever they put up 16 points in their first matchup. But he was due for a big game against us, and it happened. But, I mean, he, he tried to help limit the damage. I don't think he really did. But other than that, he had a great defensive scheme. Tennessee went ice cold. Again, I'm going to talk to Tennessee in a minute. But they Tennessee went ice cold. They were they were freezing cold. Literally everybody, and anybody but Connect wasn't doing a damn thing. Not a damn thing. And I think that is because of the, the, the substitutions, the lineups that Calipari played just matched up very very well against Tennessee and so I think Calipari deserves his roses for something like that I do also want to give credit to Justin Edwards once again you know if you've watched any of these videos you know that I'm a pretty big fan of Justin Edwards I, I do like me some Justin Edwards I think he's just a really good kid um, put up 16 point was a flamethrower from downtown man I, I really think that that Edwards has finally figured it out in on March 9th, he has he you we can say he has figured it out. I don't think he's even came close to his potential, not even one bit. But I think he he is going to be uh, he's going to be good, and I hope that he can continue this into some very nerve wracking play, uh, being SEC tournament play or big March Madness play. Um, I'm excited. I'm really excited to see what Esther Edwards does come uh, these next couple weeks. But now I do want to talk a little Tennessee basketball because. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I am going to say that I I honestly have not watched Tennessee religiously like I have Kentucky. I, I just haven't. But um, I have watched a few games. There's one weakness in Tennessee which is going to hinder them potentially in the long run. I think they're a great team. They're a great defensive team. Offensively, Dalton Connect is the glue. And that that is not a surprise to anybody. Like Obviously, he's the glue. But it's whenever he, someone like him is the glue, where he is 110% your offense, it's hard. Because if the wheels start falling off for him, the wheels start falling off for everybody. He doesn't have a go-to option if he, something goes wrong that we can potentially get, or they can potentially get some buckets from. Tennessee players were terrible. Dalton Connect almost outscored the entire his entire team by himself. Dalton Connect did put up 40 points. But here's what I here's the thing. Whenever your team is not making shots like that, and you are forced to be the one that makes shot, you're gonna get tired. You 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 are going to get tired. You're gonna get absolutely gassed, and and that's exactly what we saw. We saw him get gassed. That and at toward the last maybe four minutes, he was huffing and puffing. He's barely running up and down the court. The dude was just tired. You could just you could see it in his face on a TV screen. You could see he was tired. Uh, no telling what the the players saw. But like I said, he was the only one making shots, so he had to continue to shoot. His legs were getting tired. He was leaving everything short. He was just off-centered. His defense was was lacking because he was just slowing down. That is Tennessee's worst weakness, in my opinion, is that if Connect has a bad game, we have seen it before, but are you that confident that whenever Connect has a bad game is whoever gonna step up for Tennessee I don't know I, that is uh I think so far yeah but I also at the same time I don't think connects had very bad very many bad games like he is 
He's a bucket. He is a bucket. Um, there's a reason why he's a top five draft pick, maybe or top ten, top five. Um, like Dalton Connect is is the real deal, and um, Tennessee just has to be ready to make open shots. They 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 can't rely on that man. And like Ziggler had 17 points, but I'm he shot the ball terribly. He he did he shot it terribly, and and it looked like if you look at the box score, you would think that Connect also shot the ball really bad, but he really didn't. Like I said, he had to do what he had to do. I mean, th there was so many times where he was just like shooting and there was a guy right in his face. There was no space at all. And he was just nothing but net. Just it looked like he was shooting a layup at times whenever he was really in that zone. I mean, G Dalton Connect is good, but the rest of Tennessee has to be ready to play whenever Connect misses a shot. And, and are we going to see that come tournament time? Time will only tell. Um, but I mean, look. Like I said earlier, Tennessee, Tennessee, uh, potentially we could get a round three if both of us make it to the SEC championship, which would just be insane. Uh, if I had to imagine, just absolutely insane. Um, I guess talking about tournament, we have the final bracket. The bracket is set. It starts on Wednesday. Uh, Kentucky and Tennessee will both not play until Friday. That is when both of us will will begin our play. We play first round, our, our first round on Friday, Saturday, and the championship on Sunday. Election Sunday is also that Sunday after that game ends. Uh, so, big things. Where we are at right now, which I'll try to get a picture up so you guys can see as well what I'm looking at. Um, we are the two seed. We, we have we have clinched the two seed. There's no if ands, or buts about it. We have clinched the two seed, which is huge, absolutely huge. I've been saying it for I don't know how many weeks now that I just want a top four seed, but even then we get a two seed. Here's the thing about the SEC. It don't matter if you have a top four seed or not. You're in a gauntlet regardless. Kentucky has luckily drawn uh, the winner of the Texas A&M and Ole Miss game. Say as you will, we if we were a three or four seed we could play a 13 seed in Vanderbilt or a 14 seed in Missouri but we we were not we, we got Texas A&M who already beat us one time this year and Ole Miss who we beat um, but two very good teams uh, that that game will be played on Thursday which is obviously a mu must watch you got to watch that game just to see who we're playing against uh, which Texas A&M and Ole Miss just played yesterday uh, and it was a pretty dominating performance from AM. They won 86 to 60. Uh, so, and that was at Ole Miss. So, does history repeat itself on Friday? Who knows? They just got to play each other back to back times, which is kind of neat. Um, but yeah, that we're going to play the winner of that game. And then looking at the rest of the bracket, you know, I mean, like I said, everybody's got a gauntlet. Whether it's Tennessee, who's got to play potentially Mississippi State, who Mississippi State already beat them, right? Took us to the wire. Like Mississippi State is not a pushover by any means. They have, they are a good team. Uh, Auburn potentially has South Carolina. We know how sneaky good South Carolina is, which a lot of people are upset that South Carolina somehow got a five seed, um, especially with beating Tennessee and Kentucky. Which I get it. I get where you would, I would see that frustration, but at the end of the day, like, I mean, it's just. That's just how the rules are at the end of the day. There, it's not It's not like it was hand-picked, right? It's just how it was. Um, but Auburn potentially could play could play South Carolina. Uh, like I said, Texas, Kentucky will play Texas A&M or Ole Miss. And then Alabama potentially gets Florida. Not an, not an easy road. Tennessee is the easiest with Mississippi State. Is that really easy? I don't think so. I really don't think so. If Mississippi State loses, then it's LSU. I think LSU is a, a – I think Mississippi State's a better opponent, but – I mean, honestly, Mississippi State was was is ranked ninth in the, in the SEC, and LSU is ranked eighth. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see. I'm 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 really excited for this tournament to start. I'll probably watch everything, especially even not especially, but even the Missouri Georgia game, the Vanderbilt Arkansas game. I'll be watching it all um, because I kind of I want to see I want to see a Cinderella, Cinderella run. Uh, I don't think it's going to be Missouri. Uh, they are winless. I don't think it's going to be Missouri. But uh, I would love to see an Arkansas, maybe a Vanderbilt, pull off a win against South Carolina and gets them to go up against Auburn. Maybe even go to the Final Four of the SEC tournament. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. I think there's a lot of good matchups, and everybody is pretty evenly matched here in this first match, in this first round, uh, first couple rounds, really. 
but yeah that is going to pretty much do it uh like i said we gotta we gotta lock in we gotta we just gotta lock in this was a fun moment fun time to be a kentucky fan but the job is not finished my eyes yeah i like that we beat tennessee i love that we beat tennessee i'm not a fan of tennessee i don't like tennessee but um i am excited that we we got that win but we got to turn it around quick because we're going to win number nine we, we gotta we, we we gotta win number nine we gotta win number nine this team is so good we we can win number nine easy man come on I, I, i'm just i'm excited i want to get to it um, but i'm also nervous at the same time because i know that the wheels can fall off pretty quick um but I, I i have trust i have i believe and i trust in the boys i think they can get it done so uh, it all starts now it starts starts now and uh yeah i guess the next game um i don't know exactly what i'm gonna do with it i might uh wait until after if we win the sec championship or if we lose i really don't know i might hold off to all of it and then wait until after selection sunday to go over the bracket and stuff like that um I don't know. I'm still still gonna try to figure out. I might talk with Josh a little bit. And speaking of Josh, um, UFC 299 went off greatly. It was a great time last night. That's another something else I watched. Um, it was a great time. I think me and Josh might potentially try to get a podcast out talking about that a little bit and uh, maybe a little bit more draft news. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely a fun time to be a sports fan. It's exciting. Uh, but yeah, other than that, my name is Parker, and this is Texas Whistle. Peace.